Last week I told you that I like to shoot RAW with my phones and then transfer the images to the desktop so that I can schedule them with Hootsuite. That process begins with profiling the camera and that's what we're going to do today. As you can see, I'm out on the river again. I've no real reason to be here in order to profile my camera, but it's an amazing day. We just had the hottest day here in over a hundred years and it's still boiling. And I thought, hey, profile the camera, go out and get some test shots, see how well the profile looks and cool off in the river at the same time. So here I am, but now we're gonna go explore a little bit and get some shots while the sun's out because this is Scotland. So it might only be here till tomorrow. Oh, quick tip, Ooh, wow, that's bright. All right, let's try that again. So a quick tip for you, if you ever come shooting in lakes or rivers, if you're in the UK, get down to Home Bargains. They have dry bags for like three or four quid and they're absolutely invaluable. I got a towel, my boots, socks, and a t-shirt in there. So if I do fall on my ass, it's only the camera that dies. I've also got another one for putting my wet stuff in when I go home. So one keeps stuff dry and one stops wet stuff from getting everything else wet. But yeah, get out to Home Bargains, get a couple of those. I'm gonna keep going. I haven't been to this bit of the river before, it's really nice. some shade at last and as long as I don't fall over in this river we'll be okay if you can see this footage I probably didn't fall over so why would we profile our phone's camera I mean aren't these things like pretty good pretty close pretty accurate right out the gate yeah no cameras in phones they're really tiny they're far from being perfect and oftentimes you'll generally tend to find that the colors aren't quite what you'd hope they were especially if you're shooting raw if you're shooting JPEG, then yeah, the manufacturers usually have pretty good profiles in the camera that automatically fixes all the issues with the raw files for you and then spits you out a nice little JPEG. But I don't like shooting JPEG. I want to shoot raw and then transfer it to my computer, process them on there and then schedule them on Hootsuite. So that's why we've come out today. Well, that's not why we've come out today. We've come out today because it's bloody boiling and I want to cool off in the river. So this morning, in the back garden, I photographed both the X-Rite Color Checker Passport, which is what we use for profiling, and I'm using the Lastalite Expo Balance so that I can get my own custom white balance. I've tended to find with a lot of phones that the white balance isn't really what you think it is, and you pop in daylight, and one phone's all off magenta, and another phone's all off green, and craziness. So we're gonna make our own custom white balance profile. Yeah, but now I'm gonna relax in this shade for a bit, and and then we'll move on and go shoot some more stuff. Hey. 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 So, yes, my D5300 toppled over, fell in the river and drowned. The, the lens has been drying out for a bit and, and it appears as though nothing got in. I've tried it on another camera body and this is working just fine. This on the other hand is not doing so great. It's not powering up at all. So I'm gonna leave it for a few days to dry out, see if it sparks back into life. But before it died and I came back home, I did manage to get some shots on the Zen phone. So let's go ahead and profile the camera and see how they turned out. Okay, so here we are in Bridge, and as you can see, I'm still using CS6, although the process and principles are pretty much the same in the recent CC versions of Adobe software. But I'm gonna be profiling the Zenfone 4's camera as well to see how they compare. I have profiled the Zenfone 4 before, but only the regular camera, not the wide-angle camera. So I I'm, I'm figured I'll do them both together at the same time, then I can compare them side by side. 
So I've set up two collections. One contains the Zenfone 4 photos and one contains the Zenfone 5 photos. And you can see that there are eight images. Well, there's actually four images, but we've got the RAW and the JPEG versions of each. Two of them are shot with the regular camera of the Color Checker Passport and the Lastalite Expo Balance. And the other pair are the wide angle camera on the Color Checker Passport and the Lastalite Expo Balance. And then the other four are the JPEG versions of those images. And then we've got the same again in the Zenfone 4. So a quick scan of the thumbnail shows that there are some pretty significant differences between the RAWs and the JPEGs. When we bring up the pair of images for the Color Checker Passport on the Zenfone 5, you know, we can see that the colors are a little bit off, they're nowhere near as saturated. There's a bit of a vignette that we're not gonna deal with in this video, but that one is gonna be coming in the future. We see the same thing on the Zenfone 4. If we look at the wide angle camera here, there's some pretty significant differences there. So to profile the images, there's two things we can do. We can either use the standalone x rite software or we can just use the Lightroom plugin. The standalone x rite software is really good. It's really accurate. It's great. But the Lightroom plugin is a whole lot easier to use. So that's what we're going to do. Again, you can see I'm using Lightroom 5. I have had no reason to upgrade to CC whatsoever. So I've just stuck with Lightroom 5, but the plugin should work in more recent versions of Lightroom, including the latest Lightroom Classic. But here you can see we've got the four images. These are all the raw files. We've got the four images from the Zenfone 5 in this collection, and we've got the four from the Zenfone 4 here. And what we're going to do, it's really, really easy to do. So these two are the regular camera and these two are the wide angle. And what we're going to do is we're going to select the first regular one and go into the develop module. And all you need to do is crop around the color checker passport, straighten it up a little bit. Not that important, but it does help a little. And then hit enter. And with the X-Rite plugin installed, you just basically select the color checker passport and give it a profile. So this was the Zenfone 5 regular camera. And here you can see it at the top, it's generating the profile. We'll take a couple of minutes. We'll fast forward through this. And there you can see it's been successfully generated. Now we're gonna do the same thing for the wide angle camera. Exactly the same, just crop it down to the color swatches. And this process is exactly the same whether you're using a DSLR or a mirrorless camera as well. You just photograph the color checker passport, run the plugin, let it generate its profiles. And you do need to restart both Lightroom and Bridge in order to access the profiles once they've been generated. But right now I'm just gonna go ahead and generate them. And then once I've done all four, then I'll reload. And it really is this easy to use the color checker passport and get accurate colors regardless of whether you're using a phone, a DSLR, a mirrorless camera, whatever you've got, as long as it can shoot raw files, this is what you do. So that now is all four profiles generated. So I'm gonna close bridge and then I'm gonna reload bridge. We don't need to bother reloading Lightroom because I'm not using Lightroom. But if I go here now, you can see that the colors on the left are much more vibrant than they were and they resemble the image on the right much more closely. The wide angle one you'll notice isn't quite, it's more saturated, more vibrant than it was, but it's not quite the same as it is on the JPEG. And here's the reason why. When you profile a camera with the color checker passport, it shows up here in the camera calibration and you can see it's using Zenfone 4 regular, which was the first one we created for this camera. Cause regardless of which actual camera you use in a phone, it all comes as being shot by the same camera. In this case, the Zenfone 4. It doesn't know the difference between the Zenfone 4 regular camera and the Zenfone 4 wide angle. But you'll notice when we drop down, we get another profile there, wide angle. And when I click it, you watch the colors change. The difference between the two is quite drastic. There is that vignetting issue that I mentioned when you look at these two side by side. Actually, if I switch between one and the other, you can see on this one, there's a bright spot in the middle and it gets darker on the corners, whereas this one's the same brightness all over. This will come under the lens profiles, but again, that's something I'm not doing in this video, but it is something that I will be looking at at some point. And 
I've found on the Zenfone 4, generally if you get your vignetting around plus 75 with about a 25 midpoint, it's usually pretty even. There is still a bit of a bright spot in the middle, but it's bearable. You know, most people aren't gonna be photographing big, solid, evenly lit color like this. Certainly not with their phone. You know, so in a landscape, you're not gonna notice that much. So this is the Last to light expo balance and you can see here the white balance is slightly off in theory all of these are neutral same as this swatch right here uh, but you'll notice that when i well even just using the phone's default white balance it says 7200 and plus 128 this was set to auto white balance and if i click on here it still says 7150 and 121 you know, it's, it's staying right around that sort of 7,000, 7,200 temperature and 120 to 125-ish um, tint. So the white balance is definitely not quite as we'd like it. You know, I mean, if we go to daylight, you can see that's way off. There's way, way, way too much green in there. The wood doesn't even look like wood anymore. And as soon as we click on the gray, everything looks fine. If you're gonna be shooting in daylight all the time, which I generally do with my phone, I'm out on location, I'm location scouting, or I'm just getting behind the scenes stuff, but it's generally all outside in the daylight. So I know that basically anything I shoot outside, if I give it a white balance of 7,000 temperature and plus 125 tint, I know it's basically gonna be daylight white balanced, even though by the numbers it's wrong. You can see we've got the same thing here with the Zenfone 5. The color's much more vibrant there. If we go to this one, not so much. But if we bring it up in camera raw, again, on the camera calibration, we've got two Zenfone 5 profiles. And again, you know, we've got the same white balance issue. If we look at these, they're, they're fairly close. Again, this was shooting auto. But I'm gonna go open camera raw. We're gonna white balance off this. 7600, 121. You know, so the white balance is, is you know, it's pretty much the same issue, but this isn't something that's unique to the Zen phone. I've seen this with plenty of other phones as well. Not so much with DSLR or mirrorless cameras, but yeah, with, with phones, I've seen this quite often, just purely because the sensors are so much smaller. Um, the lenses generally aren't as high quality, obviously, as, as those found on DSLRs and mirrorless cameras, but this is basically, that's it. We're, we're profiled. We were profiled five minutes ago. So now I'm gonna go ahead and import a whole bunch of images off my Zenfone 5 and we'll see how they look. Okay, so here we are in Bridge and you can see that I've added a few of the photos that I shot with a Zenfone 5. So let's go ahead and process one. Let's take a crack at this one. So you can see here that it comes up using the Zenfone 5 regular profile. I'm going to remove chromatic aberration, sort the vignette. And then we're going to go into the regular processing tab. Clarity up a bit, vibrance up quite a bit. The white balance we're going to fix to what daylight said before, which looks a lot better. We're going to go into here and bring the luminance down on the blues just to Get that sky looking a bit better and a bit more saturation. And then crop to square, cause this one would be for Instagram. So there we go, we'll knock that around a bit more. And there we go. If I wanted to add a vignette back, I can always go and add one in. And even though there is a bit of a vignette on the lens already, I still prefer adding my own back after I've removed what comes with it because I just get a bit more control that way. I might also stick a little gradient on here just to help add a bit more saturation and contrast in the foreground and brighten up the center a little bit more. And that's it, we're done. Basically now it's open it up in Photoshop. Once we have it in Photoshop, I'll go image, resize 1920 by 1920. I'll hit Control J to duplicate. Filter, other, high pass. Not that much, maybe 0 0.3, 0 0.4, yeah, 0 0.4. And a lot of people with a, a high pass filter for sharpening, they'll go overlay. I just find that that's a little 
too heavy handed for me so I usually drop it down to soft light it just it's a very tiny difference it's about halfway between not having it at all and having it on overlay and if I zoom in you can see here's without it here's with soft light and here's with overlay you can see there's a drastic difference with overlay but if we go soft light it's a little bit more subtle um, then depending on what the image is I'll hold down alt and hit the mask button on the high pass so that removes it from everything if I turn it back to normal you can see there's nothing being shown whatsoever and if I disable the mask there you go that's everything so what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna paint it back in certain areas that I want to give a bit more detail to like the edges of some of these bushes perhaps the shadow actually possibly all of this let's do that and then if we knock this back to soft light again it's a very subtle difference if I zoom in a bit more it's a very subtle difference but it isn't just noticeable you see that it's a tiny bit soft and boom sharpens it right up so the one thing I've noticed as well on smart objects is that when you resize the edges don't often go all the way so I'll stick a black layer underneath and then just control alt shift s to save for web and devices save it out and that's it you're saved you're ready to go you can transfer it to your phone you can post it to facebook you can schedule it on instagram with something like hootsuite or later you're basically all done your phone is profiled you can go out shoot as much as you like transfer them to your computer and you know that lightroom and camera raw are going to bring the colors up looking pretty much the way you want and then it's just process them the way you would any other photo from a dslr or mirrorless camera so that's it, we're done. We've got both cameras in the Zenfone 4 and both cameras in the Zenfone 5 profiled and ready to go. Now when we go out shooting with either of them, when we put the RAW files on the computer, we're good to go. And just to show you the difference that it makes, here's a DNG RAW file straight out the Zenfone 5 using the embedded color profile. And here's the same image using the color checker passport profiled profile. As you can see, it's quite a drastic difference. Now, normally when you profile regular cameras with the color checker, you'd use it a lot more often. You'd generally use it on every shoot you do where you come under tricky lighting conditions. For the phone, for me, it's not that important. I'm pretty much always gonna be shooting these in outdoor daylight conditions. So they're always pretty much gonna be in the same lighting conditions. But what I'll do is I'll stick the color profiles for both cameras, for both phones on my website. And there'll be a link in the description to that below. And if you want to see more of my images shot on the Zenfone 5, check out my Instagram profile. A link to that will also be in the description below. But that'll do for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.